Welcome back peeps, it's Ace here, back with another video. Yes, I'm back down on the Gold Coast Surfers Paradise to be precise, looking to take some photos of strangers. And I'm gonna mix things up a little bit today as I normally do. Um, as you know, every time I go out to do photos of strangers or street photography, I like to push myself a little bit further and this is certainly no exception. Every time I go out, I learn a little bit more on what to do and what not to do and I really have totally been enjoying this process. So first things first, before we get into this video, I know the light is harsh. It was the middle of the day or close to the middle of the day. It was busy. Um, Surfers is a harsh light place. It would be amazing to be there around golden hour or even blue hour or sunrise where the light is better. Um, sunset, probably uh, better because it's more people around. There's no one around at sunrise that you want to photograph at Surfers Paradise. Fun fact for you all. So I brought the X-T3, which I'm recording on at the moment with the Viltrox 56 and a ProMist filter. And I've completely forgotten the name of the prior ProMist filter. I've been, I've had this for a while now, quite some months. I've never actually had a chance to take it out. In my mind's eye, I really wanted to get some classic street photos like you see um, some of the guys with medium format cameras do, which might be impossible with an APS-C camera. I'm not too sure but I wanted to give it a go with that depth of field and that um, that that low contrasty kind of look. Uh, you'll see for yourself if I achieve that. Spoiler alert, I haven't. Um, with this video, what I'm gonna do is talk through um, the approach. So you're gonna see me, this is a point of view video. I had the GoPro on top of the Fujifilm taking videos as I went, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and I think it gives you a snapshot of what I'm doing and what I want to do in this video is just talk through just before or just leading into the video uh, what I was thinking with each photo. So this first couple, to be honest, um, when I saw them, they actually looked, they looked a little bit sad. Uh, they, their body language was a little bit, um, it wasn't um, excited like you might expect a couple to be when they're on holidays. But I was really drawn to their colours, the colours of their shirt. They had a lot of chemistry, they were sitting really close. So I asked them, it was pretty clear um, early on that their English was not their first language. And um, once I approached them, um, they withdrew a little bit. So, uh, you know, he took his hand off her leg and um, they just didn't seem as, um, as close. But I was able to coach them and um, direct them in the photo. Um, I'm really finding, or I found very, very quickly with 56 mil is much, much longer than 35. It, the, it's chalk and cheese and I, it, it took me a few shots to actually get used to that. You'll see with this first shot, uh, I was really close. I was way too close. And I mean, their faces just fill the frame. It looks really quite terrible. But I still directed them and I still approached them. And that was a win for me. G'day. I love your colors. I, am I able to take a photo of you two? Yeah. How you were just resting on, on, your, on your shoulder. That was really nice. You gonna do that? Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. When was the last time you saw someone reading a newspaper outside uh, or even a newspaper? I mean, I know they still print them. Uh, I'm shocked um, every time I go out with a camera that unilaterally everyone is on their phone. If they're sitting down, they're on their phone. We're in surface paradise. It's, I mean, it's not the best beach, but it's a holiday destination and people are on their phone. And this fellow reading the newspaper, I thought was really cool because you just don't see it. You don't see that very often. And I wanted to capture the photo. Uh, in retrospect, it would have been nice to maybe talk to him. I think a, a better photo would have been him peering over the top of his newspaper, um, but I didn't want to disturb him because he was reading a newspaper and I think I think that's cool. I, I like this photo. I don't love it, but I, I like it. Uh, and I just like that it's something different. This next guy was a real juxtaposition. You can see he's obviously working for the council or a contractor. I was really, I was drawn to him. He had his orange high-vis vest, which really contrast um, with the harsh shadows, obviously under the tree. He had his saw, uh, which is, you know, a, you know, the hand saw, hacksaw thing. And if you've got a green thumb, I do apologize. I know I haven't got the right term for that. You can admonish me in the comments below. There's no issues with that. But I was really, um, there was a real contrast with him and a contrast with nature. Here he is in this garish high-vis vest and right behind him is the beach and the colors are soft pastels of the yellow and the blue and the sky. And here he is chopping down nature, trying to reclaim nature or tame nature. And I just thought this photo 
Uh, again, it wasn't, it's not a fantastic photo. I found it hard to expose the photo. Um, you can't actually see the saw, it blends in too much with one of the tree branches. Um, but he was really willing to have his photo and I was really quite happy with that. So that's good, I, I took the photo. I think you got the best job on the coast. Oh, yeah. It, might, might I take a photo of you holding your, holding your thing? Thanks mate. I really struggled with this next photo. I really undenied. Um, and this is this was an ethical um, conundrum for me. If you've spent any time at Surface Paradise, you would have seen this person uh, sitting around, um, really minding minding their own business. Uh, and I I struggled with this, um, either both um, making the video and shooting the photo, whether I should include it or not. Uh, it was I was it was just an ethical dilemma. And I'll let you decide whether or not I should have taken this photo or shown this video. Um, I don't like the photo. I don't like the framing. Um, it, it, it wasn't working for me, but you be the judge and you tell me um, what you thought about this particular photo. Hello, how are you today? Is, you, is this your own artwork, is it? No? Can I take a photo of you? Be comfortable with that, thank you. Are you local here? Yeah? Now that was my first rejection, that guy with the dogs. I've never really had a straight out no before. Sometimes people like to engage in conversation, but he was a no and all power to him. Hey, can I take a photo of you and your dogs? No, okay. I, I should have spent more time on this next photo. When was the last time you saw an internet cafe? Uh, it's been years for me and one that only accepts cash. So tell me that you're doing something that's outside mainstream sensibilities without telling me you're doing things outside mainstream sensibilities. It was really quite fun, quite funny. I should have taken extra time on this photo. Um, I should have um, waited for him to maybe peer up or stretch or do something rather than just get this fella's hair. It's not a good photo. There were much other um, better opportunities in that little cafe that I could have gotten some better photos, uh, but I chickened out. That's the short version of that. Uh, anyone who's lived in Australia for any more than a minute would have come across an eche or eches. I certainly have and I avoid them like the plague. And this fella that you'll see next absolutely looks like an eche with the mullet, and the bum bag and the shirt off. But then I heard he had an accent. So I figured if he's an eche, he's a foreign one. And if he does anything, you'll get deported. So it was probably a fairly safe bet if I go up and ask for his photo. And he was from, from Spain. and. He was very happy to pose for me. Yeah, the photos, that light is harsh again. It is what it is, uh, but I still got it. He was happy He was happy to pose and that was fun. Um, I get a lot of joy when someone um, is really happy to have their photos. He was laughing, he had a mate with him and I took a photo of his mate as well, who was much more serious and not Eche-like one single bit, but that was fun. And just having the confidence of um, asking people for their photos. Hey yeah, mate, can I take a photo of you? Yeah. You're, you're looking really good out there. I have to stay here. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Are you here on holiday? Huh? Are you here on holiday? Yeah, yeah. Whereabouts are you from? Spain. Oh, very nice. So welcome. <laughs> what should I do, bro? Uh, look at you, mate. And then look out to the girls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bro. Thanks, mate. <laughs> See you guys. Uh, after surfers, I pop north to the spit, and you all know I love the spit. I I love there. I love it there in, in the morning for sunrise. I love when the dogs are in action on the beach. I lo I love the waves. I love the break wall. I actually um, I met a really nice fella there, and he was on holiday from Melbourne, which I got some photos of him, but I didn't take any video, which I'm a little bit upset about. He was a really nice fella. He was happy to post with photos and. Uh, have a chat about the local, you know, local um, situations. And I think if you're open to conversations, they'll come to you. One thing that I um, try and do when I'm out and about is wear, I not wear sunglasses, even though it's quite um, harsh and quite bright, 
So I wear my normal glasses. For me, it's not a, there's a, a less of a physical barrier there. People can see my eyes. They can hopefully see I'm not shifty. Uh, it was really nice to see waves breaking over the brake wall. And a fun fact for you was that's very brake wall and waves that probably ruined my Canon 6D, which I promptly sold and bought, uh, put the money towards this X-T3 that I'm shooting on. I got this X-T3 for $950 which was a steal then, and now I haven't seen them any cheaper than about $1,300. So when when was the last time you saw a camera appreciate that's only a few years old? It's really crazy. So fun fact for you. Now the last stop was is Labrador and the, the little wading pool in Labrador. And I saw something for the first time ever. And there was a, there's a fish co up there. And uh, I was there at the end of the day and it was really clear now, there's a bit of a commotion happening, a lot of people surrounding something on the beach. So I went and investigated, and one of the guys from the co-op was feeding the pelicans, which was really interesting. Uh, you know, in the, and there were, you'll see, you'll see in the videos, heaps of pelicans and seagulls. This guy was feeding these pelicans who were having the time of their life. And I really wanted to capture him and, you know, capture the pelicans, but capture the crowd. And I didn't, I didn't nail the shots. I got a few, there's an old lady there with that little dog who evidently is the love of her life. Uh, and uh, the husband didn't even get a look in, but this little dog was really lapping up the attention from its owner. And I got some nice photos. And the last group of people were all students. Uh, I saw them pull up. This guy had uh, those orange glasses or those kind of rose glasses, which looked cool. And I uh, said g'day and they were very happy to, to pose. I, I'm really wanting to learn how to pose people better. That's really my goal. The light was really harsh, but it was nice meeting them from Chile and Spain and Korea and happy to have a quick chinwag and, and talk about the local area. So um, that, that confidence is definitely building up and I'm really getting a lot of fulfillment out of it. Um, last thoughts on the ProMist filter. It definitely clips the highlights. It definitely mutes the, um, or softens the contrast, which I like. It would have been exponentially better to shoot at golden hour. There's no doubt about that. I, I think it would have been much, much, much cleaner. I think the effect of the ProMist would have been much better. You can see it in these photos, but I don't think it's, it's as pronounced in this harsher light. I think in a studio, it would probably be really quite ideal. But it's, I mean, it, it's not bad, and it was a really good learning experience. I'll definitely keep the ProMist filter on. I think it's a one quarter um, black. It's not a black ProMist. I can't remember the brand. I'll, I'll put a title up on what type of ProMist it is. But I'll, I'll definitely keep using it. I, I, I like what it, it does. I, you probably can't um, see the difference. I can, and, and I like it. Street photographers, uh, let me know your thoughts. You guys are the experts. You're the masters. I want you to roast me. Roast the photos. Give me advice that I don't want to hear. Uh, let me know how you pick your subjects, how you frame your people, how you direct them. Mm -hmm.